Gold opens the week in what has been dubbed a flash crash, seeing gold trade down about 100 bucks right out of the open. It did spend most of the session trading higher, but the front month December contract did get as low as 1677. I'll repeat that, 1677. Last Thursday, we were trading that same contract as high as 1830. So a big shift. Uh, clearly, the job, the more positive job status, the higher dollar had something to do with that as well. But clearly, a position shift as we saw a big move lower overnight. We did spend most of the session trading back higher off that low to about 1730. That's still about 30 bucks down in the day. But certainly, uh, the market right now, uh, taking into account that there is going to be some kind of change, it looks like, out of gold and into whether it's into treasuries, whether it's into stocks, whether it's into cryptos. But there has been a big exodus of gold. It'll be interesting to see how this flows as we as the week progresses. At this point, gold has been struggling. We did see a bit of a pop higher, but we were unable to sustain it. And now back below 1800 once again. That was a level that we struggled. That 1800 level for about two weeks, we kept straddling it. We didn't see a big move lower. We didn't see a big move higher. Uh, but ultimately, we did try and make an upward move, which failed. And as of last Thursday, 1830, and then as of this morning, 1677, you can see how clear that move is. So at this point, gold lower on the day, but not on those uber lows that we saw uh, on the Asian overnight market. Now, what does this mean for volatility? Well, if you check out that CVOL index over at cvgroup.com, you will notice that volatility started to move higher prior to the, big, the opening on Sunday night and that big flash crash. But clearly, that type of move is what generates higher volatility when you see those out of left field type of moves. Now, we did see the market creep back higher, so volatility will be off the extreme highs, but certainly seeing a move like that uh, on any given day will start to build a little bit of a bit of volatility. It'll be interesting to see how that follows through the rest of the week. At this point, the market right now, clearly all eyes on the Fed and how what the Fed might or might not do in the coming weeks and months. We do have the Jackson Hole Symposium at the end of the month, but what gold now watching also along with the Fed is the dollar, higher treasury yields and higher cryptocurrencies, which took off over the weekend to the upside as well. So a lot happening, causing volatility to start a turn here as prices decline. Lastly, let's look at positioning. What are those speculators doing? They had been buying and adding to their longs throughout the entire month of July, but that seemed to come to a bit of an end last week. We didn't see a huge sell-off. Now, I think a lot of the exiting of longs may have occurred during this so-called flash crash that we saw uh, early on, but ultimately, Speculators have been very bullish, and one of the reasons why we hadn't seen any big sell-off in gold was that speculators were holding on, likely through the July FOMC and then through the job summers, and maybe after the job summers, things just turn a little bit south position-wise. They look to get out and move into other areas as yields go higher, a more attractive uh, asset as gold is not a yielding asset. So speculators may have been the ones behind that sell-off. We'll get a better picture from that on Friday when we get the updated CFTC numbers for this latest move. So gold, after struggling to get above 1800 and then pushing as high as 1830, see get walloped on Sunday night, all the way down to 1677, struggle to get back up to 1730. And from here it becomes what happens to the dollar, keeping an eye on those treasury yields and those cryptocurrencies that have been battling gold for quite a while as gold continues to struggle in 2021.